Hey guys, Mark and Beck from Wild Family Travel and the soft. Whoa! <laughs> Just fell from the tree, man. Okay, um. <laughs> Back to the start, uh, we were just about to say Mark and Beck um, from Wild Family Travel and the kids uh, when this massive coconut just uh, comes smashing down oh from a tree. Okay, so anyway. <laughs> Back to that. Um, look, here's this massive big coconut that just fell from the tree and landed about half a metre from us. So as you can see, there's... Um, it's a big coconut. Yeah. It would have tasted good. So there's a massive big coconut. Oh. Hang on, I need to. Where's the other half? I don't want to go. No, nah, we're there. Huh? Hey, Em, how you going? Um, huh. Yeah, big coconut just fell out of the tree and we landed on our heads. So <laughs> that was quite interesting <laughs> at this stage. Um, so we're in uh, Lavina Beach in Bali. Um, it's on the north coast of Bali. It's on the north coast of Bali, uh, so as far away from the tourists as you can find, literally, there's literally actually no tourists here. Yes, it was close, Sam, frightened the crap out of us. Sorry uh, about that. <laughs> we just started on this big massive coconut come smashing down from a tree probably 30 metres high and landed right next to our pool, so... Uh, and it's like, it fell. Yeah. It cracked itself in half pretty well. Yeah, lucky it didn't fall on my head, Kathy. Like, uh, Probably not I'm silly. Sense yeah, I was going to say, I'm silly enough as it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've had a coconut falling on our head. So, getting back to where we are. Sorry, Lavina. Uh, far north coast of Bali. Um, it's a suburb, basically a suburb of a town called Singaraja, which is the capital of the north. Um, the thing about being up here is we went to the centre of town today and there's not a hardly a westerner in sight we've seen two people um this place is really quiet and nearly deserted of any westerners yeah. actually uh there was probably i think we only saw about 10 and they were mainly just sitting in in bars so. um yeah so but it was yeah I, I went in to do a little bit of shopping but with the lack of um tourists around i felt really bad about buying from one stall so um <laughs> just waving to people on the screen as it comes up <laughs> so um i felt really bad just singling out one store so i didn't actually buy anything today which is surprising is pretty literally. good actually hey rachel how are you going have huh? you have you and scott been up north coast to, to Lavina? Lavina? Or Siraja. Or had a coconut nearly fall on you. Yeah, head. so that was interesting too. So yeah, so um, yeah, basically we're up here for about four or five days. We're staying at the Lillen Lavina Beach Hotel. And uh, every time Mark says it, he sings Livin Lavina Loca. Yeah, Livin Lavina Loca. <laughs> up here. Um, so it's really hot up here. Actually, I reckon it's probably hotter than it is in the south of Bali. It's probably hotter up here than it was in Kuda and Sanur. So, uh, but one good thing is we've got this splash pool here right out the very front door of, of our, <laughs> of our two bedroom, our two bedroom apartment. So, um, it's quite nice. And actually, if you just walk out the front, I'm not getting out of the water, but the beach is about, um, maybe 30 meters, 30 meters that away. And you have breakfast and dinner. If you decide to buy dinner at the restaurant, um, basically sitting right on the beach. So it's quite scenic. It's actually black sand up here. So, which is a little bit different than, than down south. Um, Megan, Kate, come home. <laughs> come home to me, Bevy. <laughs> I'm coming home. Bevy's coming home soon. soon. Um, so yeah, so we so we jump on and uh, have a chat about Bali. Um, this is our second time in Bali. So I know many people have been a lot longer in Bali. Um, we'll have spent maybe seven weeks in total here. By the time we go home, we spent about three and a half weeks when we left and we're spending three and a half weeks here. On the way home, uh, just notice as you're walking around, especially the tourist areas, you see a lot of Westerners, you know, really worried about the food here. Um, but to be honest, it doesn't really concern us much. We eat at a lot of the local places and 
in hindsight, when we think about it, the only people we hear that are getting sick a lot are actually people who are staying in resorts and <laughs> five-star hotels because I reckon that uh, they reheat a lot of their food. But when you go and have food at the little restaurants, which is called a Wurung around here, uh, that you might, M. Um, it's highly possible. Um, so when you go and have a dinner at a little Wurung, which is, I think, is Indonesian for restaurant, I guess, or no something like that, like they cook the food pretty much in front of you and uh, really nice, really cheap, really fresh as well. So, you know, we haven't shied away from eating locally the times we've been in Bali um, and, you know, anywhere we've never else, really, really, or anywhere else. Like, no. you know, I know people who say we won't eat at night markets. We won't eat here. The whole thing in Asia yeah, is, to, <laughs> is to eat the street We've food. eaten at some really questionable places. Yeah, some really dodgy times. places. Um, <laughs> but the food's been amazing. You know, look, very rarely after spending possibly the equivalent to, you know, stop looking at the coconuts, um, possibly um, <laughs> nine months in Asia uh, eating, you know, basically local food. You know, I've had an upset stomach maybe once, Rebecca was sick once, um, but, you know, nothing, no need to go to doctors or anything like that, just a slight case of diarrhoea, which you could get, you know, in Australia or any, uh, any, other any Western country for that matter, so... And look, honestly, in Bali, if you go and eat locally, it's a lot cheaper. We eat at this place in Kuta called Wurung Pak Hardy. And um, oh. that's a local Wurung. It's an mm. Asian seafood joint. And you'll get, um, get a really good meal for about $2.60 Australian. You know, you'll get... And uh, you're full. Oh, yeah. You can get like a, a, like a rice and a... Robert Rowley, go to Magpies, my friend. Um, <laughs> and a stir-fried veggies. And that's about... Three dollars? Yeah, for sure. Like, so, um, yeah. It's... I think last time we ate there, we had five main meals. So we had a main meal each and a rice to share, or two rices to share and drinks, and it was eighteen fifty. Yeah, so about eighteen to twenty dollars mm. Australian. That was for four of us for four main meals, a drink each. Um, so you can't go wrong. Look, you know, you can go and eat in Western style restaurants, and you'll you'll pay a Western style price. Mm. So. We found that when we were in Sanur last week, uh, food was a lot dearer on that side of the island. Um, there wasn't as many really cheap we rungs, but in saying that, we didn't really look off the back streets too much. Mm. Um, it was really nice just to get a beer and or a cold drink and sit. Not I've always eat, beer. I've eaten enough for ice early enough. <laughs> That's um, for sure. So, yeah, you could just get a nice cold drink and just basically watch the world go by like just watch the cars and yeah little scooters zip by yep. and so i reckon in sanur we were probably paying um uh, at what the wurungs there which were a little bit dearer um, you know uh the girls had what did they have the first night when we went to that one up the road where you had the curry uh, well, rebecca was having a chicken curry and rice and that was five dollars five dollars five dollars and i was full Every yeah. time that I walked away, that's it. I had that. We actually went back to that place twice just yeah. so I could have the curry again because, because it was, it was so nice. quite nice. I had fish one night, and I think that was six fifty. So that's on the, the dearer end of the scale, um, especially. You and know, as like, Australians, when you say you're getting a whole main meal for six dollars fifty, and that's on the dearer end of the scale, that's crazy. Yeah. Like, it's it is seriously crazy. Going back to um, Warung Pakhadi over in Kuta, we. Went there actually last year and there was a little girl there, their little daughter was playing with our girls and we showed them the picture from 12 months ago and they took a new one and now they expect us to go back every <laughs> January to have the picture taken again. So they remembered us and they remembered after we showed them the photo, they, they were really excited. So, so one thing I guess, um, another thing that Bali's all about is the beer for a lot of people. Um, look, beer prices... You'll probably pay anywhere between two and three dollars a stubby. Um, look, that's on the street in the supermarket. Um, we're drinking San Miguel. I think this was uh, two thousand um, two dollars. But you know, a lot of places have happy hour where you can get a bintang and stuff like that for probably two fifty a stubby. Um, try to stay away from the spirits a lot because they don't recommend you drink spirits over in Bali a great deal unless it comes already pre-packaged because they use a lot of this ethanol alcohol which can cause people, actually a lot of people die in Bali and get really sick from it and that's how they keep the prices down. So you're far better off to drink beer or you can buy bottled 
Smirnoff, um, you know, the Smirnoff and Lemon, Smirnoff and Raspberry, things like that. And they're not a lot dearer. They're like maybe three dollars for a stubby. So you're better off to um, you better off to go that way if you're um, if you want to drink uh, fizzy pop yep. spirits and instead of beer. And you do have to remember, a lot of the time, their tax and service tax is not included in their price, so you get slugged with that at the end. So you think, oh, I'm having this really cheap, cool drink, and then you get slugged with sometimes 16%. Yeah. Sometimes I think we got done 20% yeah. once as well. So uh, Kathy, Bottled Canadian Club, haven't seen it over here. They generally do, I think it's either it's either a bourbon or a scotch called Blackjack in a bottle. Um, similar price, about $2.50 for a stubby. Um, to buy spirits is, you know, even in a bottle over here is quite dear. We're actually having a look before up in the uh, supermarket, mm. and a bottle of Kahlua was about a hundred dollars Australian. So it was which one point um, one million. Uh, yeah, out. yeah, which is yeah. really crazy. There's actually there's not a lot of not a lot. Um, there's not a lot of choice a lot of times. Even in the beer, you might find maybe ten or twelve. Hello, Connor. Because um, in the end, you've got to remember that Bali is actually in a Muslim country. Indonesia's the biggest Muslim country in the world. Um, but Bali's very moderate because there's a lot of Hindus here as well. So, um, you know, you'll see people wearing the burqa, not the full face, the, um, the sorry, the hijab. Um, and But they're all really nice. Like we met a lot of Muslims in our travels and, you know, the ones you'll meet, you'll find a really nice, um, you know, there's, I, yeah, I'm not going to get anything political about talking about Muslims, but um, I find them all, all nice over here. There's no problem with any of them, so... So yeah, so for that reason, the choice of alcohol is probably, hey Karen, how you going? Mm -hmm. It's probably limited over here. You know, you'll find um, the you'll find the Bintang everywhere. There's Heineken, Carlsberg, a few other local ones called Singaraja. Um, we but, found this one in the supermarket. Mark laughed at me for buying it. It's a cola and orange. blood orange beer, and it's actually really nice. Yeah, seems nice. Um, so yeah, I'm drinking San Miguel uh, at the moment, but only because I've had a gut full of Bintang, so I like to change, change up the flavour every now and again. I had San Miguel Black before, which was nice. Hi, Jeffrey, how are you going? Um, hi, BJ. So, Karen, you're jealous? The pool? Oh, surely, the, <laughs> surely, Karen, the weather in the UK, you could see yourself in a pool like this in the UK at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, what else about Bali? Look, Bali's only small. Um, we'll talk about this the other day. Look, the length of the island is maybe around 110 kilometres, uh, but 5.3 million people live here. So it's highly populated, but the roads and the traffic are just, oh my God, um, they're <laughs> out of this world. So we travelled from Sanua to... With our awesome driver, Pushu, yesterday. Yes, Brett, that is us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we... Travelled with our, yeah, we've got a really good driver named uh, Putu. We've used him before. He's from Bali Discovery Tours. Tours? Yeah, yep. Bali Discovery Tours. So we use. And we actually found him through Family Bali Tours. Yep. So we use so. Family Bali Tours and Bali Discovery Tours pretty much exclusively while we're uh, over in these areas. We find they provide really good cars and their drivers are really good. Like some drivers take you, like you can hire, hire them for a day. So we hire them for a day, costs about. $55 for a day for up to 10 to 11 hours. They will take you uh, wherever you want to wherever you want to go in that time. So for $55, you know, for 10 or 11 hours is amazing. But you'll find that I've heard some companies like they'll take you to a temple and they'll just tell you to go and they will um, leave, you there. leave you there. So a lot of the drivers, Putu, Kadek Ari, Atana, who are the other drivers mm -hmm. we've used, um, they get out, they come with you, they talk to you, they explain it to you. Um, and you that's know, good. The kids as Definitely. well. They they explain it in yeah. a way that because I, I I didn't know much about Hindu traditions or culture or anything like that, and it's really nice for the kids to be able to learn another culture that is not ours. And so having someone who has that belief but it's not pushed on you, it, it's just an explanatory. So you get things explained to you while you're there that you at a temple you just wouldn't normally discover or learn. No, for sure. Um, and you're right, Kathy, $55 is an amazing price for a, for a car for the whole day, like um, literally. Um, so, yeah, so these guys come with you, you know, they tell you all about it. The only places they don't go, obviously, if you have to pay to get in, they don't come because, you know, if they're only earning $55 for a day, they're not going to spend money to come into a place with you. 
you want to pay for them to come in, they'll come in and explain anything you want. Um, because we're on so little money, we generally buy them some water and lunch if we're going to have lunch. Because if we're I think... eating and drinking, then we will make sure they eat and yeah. drink as well. And a lot of the times, they're really uncomfortable about taking it from you, but I'm not going to sit down and have a meal with my family and have someone who well, we'll have Putu just sit with us yeah. or sit somewhere where he can't have a meal with, with us. us. That's it. So Because, you know. So getting back to the original conversation, which was about the roads in Bali. Oh, yeah, sorry, the roads in Bali. <laughs> so, yeah, just saying uh, we travelled from Sanua to Lavina here. It was uh, 91 kilometres. So in Australia, not a great deal of distance, probably take you under an hour. took three hours and 30 minutes yeah. to travel that distance. And that's about standard in Bali because there's no highways. So very rarely do you get up to speed anywhere. The roads are very windy. It's very mountainous coming from from the the other end of Bali to this end. So it took a, took a fair distance. So we knew that day because we'd been basically up here before, not quite to here, but we were able to see this town from when we were in the mountains once before. Yes, I think you need to get a passport and go to Bali Catholic. Yes, it's pretty cheap. Anyone can afford to go to Bali. Um, you know, literally, if you get a cheap flight with Jetstar, you might get a return for four or five hundred dollars. Look, you can stay in accommodation for two fifty dollars a night in pretty good digs. Um, you know, food and drink is cheap. Like I said, drivers are cheap. This, for example, this place here. I know we got this last minute, so it was a little bit cheaper. But we've got two, be two bedroom, two room villa. So we've got one room here, one room over there. They both got a big queen size bed in it, shower. We've got this big splash pool out the front and I think it cost me about $110 Australian a night. And so, a free coconut. And a free coconut that fell out of the tree. And because Lavina is not the tourist mecca, the, uh, there's free transport with the owner if you go anywhere within Lavina. Um, look, there's not much to see in Lavina. There's a big joint up the road called uh, Krishna and they've got a water park and and a theme park. So, and get this, we went to Water Bomb in Kuta, so which is one of the most famous uh, water parks in Bali and cost Western prices. So $40, $50 to get in. We're going to go to this, excuse me. <laughs> we're going <gonna, laughs> to go to this Krishna water park up the road here tomorrow. So it's open for, it's low season. So it's open from 12 o'clock to six o'clock and it's going to cost $7 for us to get in each. each. So. $7 for a day's entertainment up here is fantastic. But before that, tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., we're going to go dolphin watching. Uh, the hotel organise it, $10 each for two hours. They take us out in a boat. And before we came up here, I actually had a look to see how much a dolphin tour was on Get Your Guide and on Viator. And you're looking at $90 a person if you ordered one that way. So the hotel were like, no, 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 we'll just do one for $10, two hours. And hopefully, Later on in the week, um, yeah, 300 a night for a friggin' spa. I hear you, Kath. Uh, this joint's got a spa in it. Actually, when we checked in, we got vouchers for a free 15 minute massage, but you can get more. And later on in the week, they were going to take us out snorkeling um, and and on the reef. So, well. And that's $10 a person, too. So you can't beat that. So, But then prices, like I said, are only really available up North Bali where there's not the amount of tourists up here. So. So yeah, it's uh, it's really nice. I'm, <laughs> um, you're sorry. freaking me out a bit. I keep thinking you're waiting oh, no. for it. Oh, <laughs> coconut, oh, coconut. coconut. Sorry for anyone who's joined. A coconut fell out of the tree before and landed about half a meter from us and smashed wide open. So we're hoping that one falls out and smashes on our head at this stage. Yeah. Um, so shopping, I suppose, in Bali. That's your question. This is my forte. Um, with the limited amount of luggage that we had. Um, all right, so that's probably an exaggeration already. I uh, went crazy in France. When we made the decision to come home, I was able to do a significant amount of shopping. So I did that in France and then a little bit in the UK and I've done a significant amount in Bali. It's a bartering system. Um, I was terrified of bartering in Vietnam. I actually freaked out and ran out of the market and refused to buy anything as the lady was trying to drag me back into the shop. I've come a bit of a long way since then. She's come a long way. <laughs> um, sarongs and, and stuff like that, you pay about 40000 for, so about $4. 
Um, there was a shop in Sanur that I really liked. It was Annie's, Annie's shop. Um, she didn't mess about. Uh, I think I paid $10 for a, a really pretty dress that Willow really wanted, $12 for another one, uh, $10 for a shirt and shorts for um, Marley. And a lot of people will probably say, I could get it for cheaper in Bali or I'd barter them. I'm not going to barter someone down for a dollar because that's basically – that jet's just in the wrong spot. Um, I'm basically not going to barter someone – if they obviously, if they say, you know, 200 for something that you really think is expensive, I normally go for about 80 and then I get it for about 100 so it's about 10 bucks Australian. But I'm literally not going to barter – and argue and walk away for a dollar. Just remember, these guys have got to make a living too. So just set a price that you're happy with. And, mm. you know, we all like a bargain. And Australians are notoriously stoogy when it comes to being in Bali and wanting to pay next to nothing for everything. But these guys live on a pittance compared to what we live on in Australia. So, you know, if you get a price that you're happy with, just take it. Don't keep bartering them down and down and down and just down. Just see how low they'll go. Yeah. Um, I've seen on a few forums about Bali that people like to get things for as, as low as possible. Like I was paying $6 for a, um, for a T-shirt and stuff like that. And you can go to fixed price stores, which yes, we've one's gone called to. called Krishna and what's the other one? Agung. I Agung, think. yeah. And they're really good. But I'm not going to – I don't – I don't feel comfortable and I didn't buy a lot here in Lavina today or didn't buy anything in Lavina today because there were so many shops that just had no one in it and I didn't want to single out one shop and sort of I, I felt bad about that sort of thing. And no yeah. one else. Um... And Aussie is behaving badly. A lot of people go on a lot about Australians behaving badly here. Oh, yeah, how they... much is the beer, Shirazi? Sorry, <laughs> we, um, we spoke about that just before. Um, I would say average price two dollars fifty a beer. So, and that's on the beach. That's in the supermarket. It's pretty, it's pretty standard. Um, so yeah, you'll pick up um, San Miguel. Well, I think it was two dollars in the super. But Bintang, which is seems to be the staple around here, is anywhere between two fifty, two eighty on the beach. Maybe three dollars on the beach in Kuta. But yeah, so it's not too bad. Everywhere has happy hour. So yeah, so back to your back to you. Oh yeah. Um. You were talking about the bartering? Oh, uh, no, no. The Aussie's behaving badly. Aussie's behaving badly. In Obviously, Bali. you're going to see, if you're out late at night, you're going to see people severely intoxicated and behaving badly. We honestly haven't seen that much of that. Because um, we don't stay out late. We don't stay so out late. We're old kids people. aren't party people. <laughs> oh, I was going to blame the kids, but <laughs> you're old, I'm not. Um, so, <laughs> so we don't see that sort of thing. You know, we have dinner. Yes, Thanks, you Rosie. do see... <laughs> people um, just being rude and stuff like that. But you'll see that anywhere you go. Um, you see that in, we saw that in Poland. Yeah. We've seen it in Czech Republic. We've seen it in lots of different yeah. places. So I think if you just come and um, respect, be nice, yeah. you're pretty much all right. If you get out late at night, you're probably going to see yeah. a lot of people, a lot of different people behaving badly. Yeah. So, um Look, one of the times we've spent in Bali where a lot of people just go back to the same spot. This is actually the fifth different place we've stayed in Bali in region-wise um, or area-wise. So we've stayed in Kuta now. We've stayed in San Udbud, Sanua. This is Lavina. So actually, sorry, not the fifth. And at the end of the week, we're going back to Seminyak, which is another popular area. So I would say that my favourite area... So far has been Sanua. Um, we stayed in a little hotel, hotel jetty. We had like a, a two-room villa there. It had our own little sort of front yard. And we just walk out and you're basically on the main street straight away. So you could walk to have a drink. You could walk to have breakfast. You could walk to the beach. It was all there. So for us it was probably... The, one of the better spots we've stayed on the entire trip. Yeah, look, it's a really nice area. There's a lot of big hotels and stuff there, but you walk out your door, there's a street full of restaurants and bars and shops and, you know, there's a supermarket. And there's a couple of alleyways that lead to the beach, which is about 150 metres down the alleyway. The beach is uh, white sand. 
really shallow water um, because there's a reef out, out there. Um, there's a lot of uh, beach bars, beach clubs. Um, you know, so you can hire paddle boards, sail boards, or you can just sit down and have a beer and watch it. Well, I shouldn't say watch the sun go down because the sun actually goes down on the other side of the island, on the Kuta side. But you get a nice orange and red sky at night as it comes down. You can actually sit there if you're a plane person. You can watch the planes come into land at the airport. They come flying in every five minutes or so. They don't make any noise because it's up the other end. But it's pretty cool watching them just uh, continue to, to fly into Bali nonstop. Um, so, yeah. Uh, what else have we got to talk about in Bali? <laughs> Anyone got any questions? Um, good time to fire them off to us about Bali. We're, about, only, one, we're only one beer in, so about England, time. about Europe, um, <laughs> about anywhere in Asia. Anyone really worried about this virus that's going around in China at the moment? Um, we can't answer those questions. No, I said anyone worried about it. Oh, okay. I don't, so I didn't know about it. Um, oh, I said we couldn't answer any questions on it. I see a lot of stuff going on on the internet. People are afraid to travel. Uh, Travel to China will be cheap, I would say, in the next few months after they fix it anyway. So just keep enjoying watching back. <laughs> watching, watching the tree. Yes, the tree spotter up there. Oh. So, uh, but yeah, so. I thought falling coconuts was hitting me on the head and killing me with a myth, but that would yeah. really hurt. So, look, uh, what can I say about barley, really? Look, it's, I would say we've spent, like I said, a couple of blocks of around three weeks. I'd say that's probably enough here like that's at the maximum end of the time you would want to spend in Bali unless you're the type of person that loves to just go and lay on the beach basically all the time um, or you want to do a lot of hiking outdoor, outdoor stuff yeah. like you know there's a lot of hiking into waterfalls there's ATVs we went last time rice fields we went to a beautiful waterfall Sugumpu and I hey Ben <laughs> hi Ben um, and I think it probably took me three days to recover from the steps. It was a thousand steps down and Willow and I did it. Mark and Marley stayed at the top and, um, and it was really good. And then Willow and I looked at each other and went, oh, we've got a thousand steps up. <laughs> okay, Michelle, what is the one tip you would say is a must in Bali? I would say to make sure you go on holiday with friends in Bali. Yeah. I would say that's... That's a that's a top tip. Um, yeah, enjoy enjoy beers. Yeah, enjoy beers yeah. with friends. With friends. Uh, <laughs> how much would a couple need to have, say, a ten day holiday in Bali? Well, look, we that's we, a loaded question. It depends like, how much you want yeah. to spend, though, cats. But yeah. we've been working on about I would say close to a hundred dollars a day for four of us. That's spending money. So you can chuck your accommodation on top of that. I reckon for two people at this place we stayed in Sanur, which was quite nice, was about. $48 for a double room for two. So you could have $500 for uh, accommodation for 10 days. You know, I would say, you know, $100 a day to $150 a day spending money for two people plus whatever your flights are. Um, you should be able to get return flights to Bali for under $500 these days if you look out. So, you know, so you'd be looking $2,500, I would say, for a 10 day holiday. So, it's all right, Ben. I've come a long way. I don't spill beer. I drink, <laughs> I drink more beer than. <laughs> so, Michelle's asking us what excursions would you recommend in Bali? Um, look, we've seen most of the temples in Bali. Mm -hmm. And look, to be honest, I'd prefer to go to a temple in Thailand, literally. A lot of them, because they're active working temples or active yeah. religious temples. Um, you can't go inside a lot of them. Um, mm. so, Ulan Danu was one of our favourites. Yeah. Um, sunset at Tanalot was Tana really Lot. nice. Yeah. yeah, we enjoyed that. Um, Sagumpul Waterfall, that was really good. As I said, a thousand steps down though, so a thousand steps up. Um, mm. I want to go to the monkey forest, but oh, none of my no, family... No, we're not going to a monkey None of my forest. family will be in it because yeah. a monkey grabbed Willow's hair when we were at uh, Uluwatu, oh, which was another temple um, in the south of Bali, and that uh, freaked her out. So apparently the monkeys are a bit more... Aggressive. ...down that way than they are at the monkey temple. Like they say, make sure you put all your um, stuff in your pockets because they will come and steal it, literally. Yeah. Um, They'll just take... When we were at Uluwatu, we watched this one monkey just grab the guy's phone and threw it off a cliff. So why would you try and 
No, I don't. And then they bare their teeth, and and then they all kept trying to touch Willow's hair. So she wasn't real happy about that. So, but yeah, um, <clears throat> so yeah, there's a few things to do. Look, if you're like I said, if you're really uh, and for ladies, there's plenty of spas, massages, mm. all that things around everywhere. There's plenty of beach clubs, so you can go and hire a sun lounge, lay on the beach. Someone will come and get your drinks, get your food, get you whatever. You know, you can hire paddle boards. I was looking at these guys at St. Una the other day in the shallow water going fishing. Um, so next time we come, I want to do that. I think that would be quite good. Jet skiing's fun. Look, I'm always a bit sus about hiring a jet ski. Look, we went jet skiing in Malaysia and we did it with a company. So it was really good. But I read... We actually saw is, it on the beach, though, yeah. on the way back. There was a See, gentleman returning his um, jet ski and they were having a massive argument because apparently it was damaged. It's a pretty, pretty big scam. You bring, um, even for motorbikes and stuff like that, you bring them back and they say, oh, it's damaged, it's damaged, and now you have to pay all this money for it. So hiring a jet ski or a motorbike off just a person on the beach or on the side of the street isn't yeah. really... It's always a scam running, and that's oh, the thing. Hey, um, Sonia. Look, I wouldn't. So Sonia's just asked, uh, we're looking at going to Bali this year. Is the traffic that bad? Should we stay close to the Cooter and be able to walk everywhere or not possible? Um, I think you, I think with your family, you might be better off in Sanu and maybe staying in a, in a place or you might even be better off in Cooter where you can, you do get harassed a lot more in Cooter. Yeah. Um, you, it's constantly, do you want to buy this? Do you want to buy this? And one no is not enough. In Sanur, they would come up to, to you when you're sitting eating at the restaurant or anything. You'd say, no, thank you. And they'd say, where are you from? We're from Melbourne. And you'd have a 10 minute conversation. And then they would, and you would just say, look, no, thank you. And they would walk away. In Kuda, this would happen literally every 10 minutes by a different person when yeah. you're sitting on the beach. Um, with the little place that we stayed at, um, Hotel Jaddy in Sanur, um, has a little private courtyard that you can shut the door to so the kids can't get towards yeah. the pool, but there is a small koi pond. You walk straight out the front, you're straight on the main street and you're within 100 metres of restaurants, good restaurants, good for the kids. Um, and there's a little uh, shop just out the front. So um, with that, you can hire babysitters, you can hire everything in Bali. Yeah. We've just had our washing done um, and we paid Nikki Spa 25000 Yeah, 25000 a kilo. So that's $2.50 a kilo. And she'll come on a motorbike, pick your washing up for you from your yep. hotel in uh, Kuda, Seminyak, Leggan and um, take it away and, um, and wash it for you and bring it back and it smells unbelievable. Yeah. But as for the traffic, look, you don't even... Don't worry about the traffic. Grab, but Grab is like the Asian version of Uber. Yeah. So you download the app and you take a Grab absolutely everywhere. Costs you next to nothing. Um, you know, when we were staying in Kuta, we were a fair way back. So, you know, to go two, three kilometres to the beach was $1. ninety Australian, things like that. Even to go from Sanua to Kuta, I had a look the other day, was $8 and it's about 30 minutes. So yeah. you're far better off. The traffic's bad, but look, if you can get a grab, but look, you just, they come pick you up, take you and, and, uh, you and away you go. if you look at a place that has a shuttle service, if you do stay in Kuta, if you look at a place that has a shuttle service, a lot of the time they will take you to Kuta Beach or they'll take you to the shopping mall, they'll take you to Waterbomb, anywhere like that, and they will pick you up again yeah, at we... certain times. So have a look at a, at a place that, that offers a free shuttle service yeah. as well. Um, so, yeah, so yeah. we stayed in some, like I said, some pretty good places. We'll leave some links when this posts up on the Facebook wall of some of the places we've stayed. And so you can have a look. And stuff yeah, about what we've learned that's it. Along so, the way. we're talking about places, regions we'd stayed. Uh, we stayed in Udbud for a week when we were here last time. Um, Udbud's, uh, look, it's inland, so there's no ocean, no beaches there. It's, People tend to say it's a bit more relaxed and spiritual. I didn't really, didn't really get into that vibe a great deal. Uh, the feeling of it. Um, it's quite calm when we were there last year. Yeah. And then we visited again the other day. The other day. Oh, and you could not move. It was crazy. We went actually to Ocker's uh, for 
roast pork bar- barbie guli. And um, we learned that last time we were here with good Indonesian food, they took us there. And um, it was amazing roast pork. It's suckling pork, so um, suckling pig. So, but you couldn't move. You just couldn't move on the, on the street. It was just madness. So I can't read. Sorry, Sonia, we can't. This goes off your brains more. Yeah. Yeah, no problem there. Have a look. I can send you links and stuff like that. Yeah, so um, like Woodwood was nice, but we had a really good place similar to this one at Woodwood. Um, it was off the street. It was down in a little valley and uh, what was it called? Alarm Terrace Cottages. Alarm Terrace Cottages. We had a, we had a one bedroom unit with uh, two big queen size beds and you walked straight outside the door and your pool was there. It was surrounded by palm trees. It was in a little valley. It was probably only... 10 minute walk into the center of Woodwood. Um, but yeah, it was fantastic actually. It was probably one of the favorite places I have stayed in yeah. in this whole trip. Um, to be honest with you, the breakfast was good, the food was good. Uh, you could get drinks brought down to your unit. Um, really good place yeah. to stay. And I think it was once again only around the 60 or $70 Australian mark for four people for, I think for a the lot time of, to stay. A lot of people either choose or maybe think that you come to Bali and need to spend a lot of money. Um, probably helps that being right. <laughs> but Hence why we've travelled for 12 months. <laughs> right, he wins that battle every time. But I think, yeah, a lot of people think that you have to come to Bali and spend a lot of money. You've got to stay at Novotel or you've got to stay at Panama and, and all, all, all that sort of stuff. You can, the Indonesian or the Balinese people uh, will bend over backwards for you, especially if you have kids. Like They're literally just beautiful people and you don't have to spend a lot of money to really enjoy Bali. Um, obviously, if you want to, cool. Like, yeah, do whatever life, you want. Yeah, you go know. for your life. But, yeah, you hey, don't have to... Hi, Dad. Um, you don't have, you to, don't spend have to spend over here at all. A like, fortune. You know... <laughs> If you've got the money and you want to stay at a resort and you want to eat at the resort, a lot of people go to resorts and never leave the resort. Um, my view on that is you can do that in Australia. You might as well go to Queensland. You know, if you're going to come to a foreign country, you need to get out. You need to experience the people, the culture, the food. Um, every single part about it is is why you travel internationally. Is not to just feel at home and accustomed like you would in Australia. Is to learn about you know, the Balinese culture, the Balinese people, eat the Balinese food, you know, and don't let the whole worry about food poisoning and all this sort of uh, garble like that yeah. hold you back. Um, I know it can be intimidating at times. Um, and look, it is. It is scary. Like, sometimes, the, f- the first time we walked out on the street in Bali, we were like, what are we doing here? Where, what is, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? Where did all this traffic come from? But you really just set into a routine into a rhythm um, and it ends up being a really good experience. We sort of, because I suppose there's that bogan culture with bogans come to it, Bali and they act badly and all the rest of it, as we said before, we haven't seen that. But I, we sort of were like, oh, are we going to like it or not? We sort of maybe didn't want to like it as much as we do yeah. because we like other places, yeah. we thought it wouldn't be, have as much culture or anything like that, but it's completely wrong. Yeah. There's as much culture and there's as much learning to do in a country as you want. That's it. And if you want to come somewhere, learn about a culture, Bali is yeah. just as beautiful as anywhere else. Melissa, there's, we see plenty of families over here with uh, yeah. young kids, uh, your daughter's age for sure. And um, look, there's if your daughter likes water sports and things like, well not water sports but you know she's swimming a water baby beach, she likes yeah. swimming at the beach pool. swimming in the pool there's water parks uh you know there's plenty of there's plenty of things to do um in bali like i was saying before you just tuned in you probably missed it the transport is not really an issue um because if you download grab which is the asian version of uber uh costs you next to nothing you know we were getting two or three kilometers down to the beach from our hotel hey, cost you dollar ninety two dollars three dollars hey Suze. um you know so it's not really it's pretty cheap to get around that way if you're in a if you're get, catching a grab to and from wherever you want to go in bali um and it's easier too because the traffic here is horrendous um you know a lot of people come over and they hire scooters and you know you always see all the time mm. over here 
They talk about Westerners uh, crashing and things like that. And look, anyone can hire a scooter. You don't need a license, but that invalidates yeah. invalidates your travel insurance. So if you have a crash when you've hired a scooter um, mm-hmm. and you need to go to hospital, you're paying for it out of your pocket, literally. Travel yeah. insurance is going to wipe their hands with you and say, no, yeah. no, 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 no. So actually, this is something me and Beck have been talking about. We're hopefully going to go home and... Um, we're going to be the people who yeah, we're on scooters. Yeah, we might buy a scooter, I think, and uh, and get our motorbike license. So next time we come over here, we can actually hire scooters. Um, obviously, for us, the forward plan is to continue to travel a fair bit going forward. And, you know, everywhere you go in Asia, they ride around in scooters. And I'm a bit of a stickler. I don't really want to ride around on a scooter, like I said, without a license because if one of us crashed, like I don't want to be one of them people, you know, crowdfunding and, you know, appealing to people to give us money so we can afford to airlift ourselves home when we're, you know, all screwed up over here in a hospital. So, And we've learned the value of travel insurance four times now, haven't we, Master Kidney Sirens? Yeah, well, this is it. You know, this trip has been, what, 13 months odd um, and we've been to hospital four Four times. times. Um, I've been twice, both times in... Cambodia where I had kidney stones so I went in Batambang which is like the ass end of the world um, no worries Mel uh, end of, but yeah definitely Melissa come to Bali it's really good um, yeah it's good for kids too so yeah. you'll really love it it's really laid back and chilled so yeah I went to Batambang which was the ass end of the world then I had to go again in Phnom Penh which is the capital of Cambodia where I pretty much got to say that the hospital was probably better than hospitals in Australia nearly that yeah. hospital yeah um, because they're all private hospitals. So what happens is from the moment you walk in, they're charging you money. So you're really well looked after. Um, we went to this one, a Vin, Vinmec? Vin, Vinmec. 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 Vinmec International Vinmec. Hospitals. They're run by a uh, Vietnamese multinational corporation. Um, so the hospitals are really white, shiny, flashy, very clean, you know, so they wheel you in, do all these tests on you, send you away with a $2,000 US bill. Um, so hence why your travel insurance then Comes, comes in. in handy. <laughs> and that was, and actually in the hospital that we went to in Da Nang for me, had Australian Heart Foundation uh, posters and all that sort of stuff around the walls. So, yeah. And they were, they were really professional, they were really good. And that's, you know, we say to everybody, you have to have travel insurance no matter what you do and you have to make sure you know it. Need to read your policy, and literally, you too. Abide by it. Yeah. So, literally, read your policy, abide by your policy. I often say if you can't afford insurance, you can't afford to travel because um, mm-hmm. I know it's a, a fair expenditure for some people, and for us, it was too. I know. Um, you know, literally, look, we took a punt on this trip, and all we took was medical um, because it was going to cost so much to take cancellations and theft. So, luckily, we've had nothing stolen, nothing cancelled, so we haven't had to. Um, haven't had to worry about that, but like, you know, if you look at the right policy and get the right details, Rebecca's big thing was she likes to know if she died, that she'd be repatriated to Australia. Well, so we always make sure that, that happens and you have unlimited medical, um, you know, you generally have to pay, I think it's $200, $200 excess. So I yep. think our insurance actually cost us a little bit over $1,000 for 12 months, um, but you can only get it for 12 months. And because we went over 12 months, I had to look for more insurance to cover us for the last two months. Okay, and get this, for two months, it cost over $300 for us, which was over a quarter, like that was more than a quarter of what the whole 12 month was. And I said, why is this? And they said, because you're already overseas. So, which I couldn't really understand. I said, well, we originally took the policy out when uh, when we were in Australia, so... But whatever, it didn't matter. We had to have travel insurance because, yes. like I said, if you can't afford to travel, you can't afford to... Mal, which area of Bali would you recommend is better for smaller kids? Okay, go to Sanua, Sanua. for sure. Yep. It's a little bit quieter. The beach there is good. You've still got all the shops and everything. So mm-hmm. I would definitely go to Sanua. Stay away from... Stay away. I wouldn't say stay away from Kuta, but Sanua, <laughs> Sanua, Sanua is what I sort of imagined Bali would be like. Kuta. You know, there's lots of... Lots, yeah. of, oh, yeah. lots of little shops, um, nice restaurants, nice beach. Nice people. Nice people, well, nice beach people. bars, you know, things like that that you can go and have some tea at and doesn't cost you a fortune. So definitely go to Sanur. We stayed in a really good place in Sanur. Like I said, we'll leave some links when this actually goes up on Wild Family Travel's Facebook wall or some of the places we've stayed in Bali. And, you know, look, we would definitely go and stay there again. The place in Kuta we stayed at, which is called Harris Riverview, we've actually 
stayed there twice. It's a nice budget hotel that has breakfast and a couple of pools. Um, you know, but it's, a, it's a little bit dated, but it's not that's not an issue. The beds are comfy, so my house yeah. is dated. Yeah, that's it. Depends what you want to pay and what you mm. and what you're expecting, and you'll often find that in Asia everywhere. Um, if you scratch too far under the surface, you'll certainly it's always sort of find something wrong. Ninety percent. It's about ninety percent. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah, a lot of things in Asia, especially accommodation, are made up to look really, really flash. Um, you know, and then when you get in, you have a look, and you'll always find something that's just a little bit. You know, that's been covered up, patched up, but hey, that's Asia, and that's why it's cheap, and that's why people come here all the time um, to do things. So, yeah, um, in the end, Bali's quite good for that. Hi, Rosie. <laughs> so, it took us 22 hours to get here from Manchester when we first arrived in Bali, 22 hours? 20 hours. 20 hours. Yeah. And jet lag, jet lag. Jet lag kicked us out <coughs> so really badly, didn't it? It did. So, um, because you're going from one side of the world to the other, it's not so bad coming from Australia. It's only three hours, but we were eight hours. So we'll head back. When we head back to Australia, we're only three hours difference again. You'll find most flights out of Bali to Australia go overnight anyway. Ours is no different. We're flying with um, Garuda Indonesia. It leaves at 10.55 p.m. And we get back into Australia at 7.35 a.m. in the morning. The three hour difference, so it takes five and a half hours. Um, all I can say is if you plan on doing a lot of shopping in Bali, you're better off paying a little bit extra and flying with a full fare carrier like Garuda um, because they give you 40 kilos of luggage, two bags, we're gonna need a that carry now. on. Um, and we are going to need it now. Um, we started off with one small carry on suitcase and one backpack. Uh, since we've the last few weeks, we have exploded. exploded and added three big sports bags full of uh, <laughs> full of shit. No, full of shit. Full no. souvenirs. Oh, my. It's full not of, shit. No, that's no. That's rude. That is true. There's some wooden penises in there. Um. They're not mine. They're his. <laughs> and just, they're, just, they're to clarify, just to clarify, just to clarify, just to clarify the wooden God. the wooden penis thing in Bali, what? they're huge. They're bottle openers and they're shaped in this. Shaped like penises, so... Um, it's yeah. taken a significant amount of talking to our daughters as well yes. while you come across them all the time. Yeah, while you come across wooden penises everywhere in, mm. in Bali, so... Uh. <laughs> I have reassured them, though, continuously that it's not real life and not to worry about it. Hey, Lockie, what's going on, man? <sighs> beer time. I've actually finished my beer. I'm so have I, nearly. I think no, it's... not. That's bit, not It's a little bit warm, actually. It's starting to bubble because I've, I've obviously been... No, 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 no. Go away. <laughs> I've actually been taught, this is a girl that left Australia and hated beer and now... I've never had a beer. Oh, not never had a beer. That's an exaggeration. I never drank beer. And now I out drink my husband. One of us has got to be responsible. Oh. <laughs> and seemingly that's me. Yeah, because he's old. <laughs> yes. Ah, okay. Um, I yeah, I think that. we've covered enough. We actually wanted to be prepared this time and have a list of things that we were talking about, we wanted to talk about, but... But, again. Yeah, because we sort of pulled the trigger really quickly and then the coconut nearly hit us on the head. And um, on my you've got dog. one. Yes. You've got, oh, Sharon, you've got a wooden penis. Okay. <laughs> bottle opener. Bottle opener? Bottle opener needs bottle to go on the end Sharon. of it. Wooden penis bottle opener. It says barley on it. So Yeah, that's it. I know a few dicks, so I bought a few of them to take home for them. So. You should have seen him walking around uh, uh, the bloody uh. shop so proud of himself. He comes like a poor driver, Pooja, who just, he, all he could do was stand in the corner and laugh at us. I said, I never thought I'd be walking around with four dicks in your hand. So, oh, um, yeah. Stop. But this is Bali, so. <laughs> <It's> so <laughs> Lucky there's only nine people left online at this stage. So, um, okay. <laughs> Kathy's got a vibrating bottle opener. Okay. Kathy, <laughs> overshare. Overshare. Anyway, okay. it's starting to, well, I wouldn't say it's getting dark, but it's the weather's, uh, the day's drawing to an end here. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to sign off and probably have another beer or, you know, have some tea and uh, call it a day. But We're budgeting tonight, so we're having... Um, Noodle cups with chicken and vegetables. Yeah, we fresh bought, vegetables. Yeah, so we bought some uh, roast chicken, which was how much? Six dollars. Six dollars for roast chicken. It's a mini chicken. It's not like a chicken in Australia. And uh, so we got that. And we got some 
fresh fruit and some fresh vegetables, yep. some bok choy, and we'll put them in the noodle cups. And, and away we'll so, go. Yeah. That's it. So, yeah. That saved uh, eating here. Like, there is a restaurant here um, that was probably on the dearer side. You're probably, I think we paid 400 for tea last night, which is 40 bucks. So, it's not... It's not, no. really, it's not really dear by Australian standards, but, but, by, as well. but by Asian standards, it's, you know, it's probably a little bit dearer than what, we, um, than what we like to pay. So, like I said, tomorrow we're going on Dolphin Tour at 6am and then we're going to go to Krishna Water Park. So, uh, be a big day up here in Lavina, North Bali tomorrow. Okay. Everyone, bye-bye. Bye. See you uh, back in Australia. Cheers.